Let's say a bit further on this media encounter yesterday and matters arising. You recall that there's been a number of questions about why the vice president, who is the flag bearer of the MPP, is not doing some of the things that he is promising he will do if elected as president. For instance, abolishing e-levy, the betting tax, and so on. The question is, his sitting vice president, a number of you have been asking, do, do it now, show commitment now so that we can trust that you will do it if you become president. Well, there was a question that was asked of him yesterday, and this was his response. The other issue um, was that we wanted to do these tax reforms, import duty, flat tax, tax amnesty, and so on. But why don't I do it now? And, and why do I want to? I must have a manifesto. Otherwise, if I do everything now, <laughs> if I could, <laughs> what would I do when I come into office? <laughs> I mean, how can you do everything now? Uh, uh, even President Mahama, former president, who, is, who was president, I'm only vice president, but he was president. Why didn't he do everything then? I mean, why is he coming back? He had full authority. I don't have full authority. The budget that has gone to parliament, which has been passed, is not my budget. Is it my budget? It's not my budget. The budget goes in the name of the president. It doesn't go in the name of the vice president. But when you have to think about what new do you want to do, you come up with new ideas. And I've come up with new ideas which I want to do when we come into office. Everyone who is running for office, whether you are Kamala Harris or you are Baumia, you still have to think about what you have to do when you get into office. And this is why I'm presenting my new ideas. Well, that's Dr. Mahmoud Baumia then, presenting new ideas. That's his response to the question about why is he not doing some of the things that he's promising now as sitting vice president and, and also the head of the economic management team. Professor Kobi Mensa is a political marketing strategist and also um, a lecturer at Investor Ghana Business School. Now, is joining us on Zoom as well. Professor Kobimensa, thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And, and you see this from, from the strategic point of view, even the timing for this encounter, and then also some of the answers given from where you sat, and then also the responses we've got from our poll on, on, on X, for instance, about whether this achieved the objective of getting people talking over and above what the NDC did on Saturday. From your analysis, were these objectives achieved? that was yesterday, that particular encounter? Well, uh, thank you so much, you know, Alfred, for, for that. I mean, I had actually tweeted. Uh, immediately, the announcement came that it was the strategy to take the shine, you know, off the NDC manifesto launch. Uh, but of course, uh, I think that from a strategy perspective, political parties can do that. I mean, I had always maintained as a, someone very deep in political marketing, the election is about strategy, you know. And of course, when I say strategy, I don't mean foul means. Uh, I don't mean, you know, what people think about uh, when they talk about strategy as, you know, stealing, etc. No, but I'm talking about genuine strategy. How do you counter your opposing parties? you know, ways, uh, whether it's about visibility, taking visibility away of them or from them, or whether it's about, you know, strategically targeting certain segments of the of the electorate, et cetera. And so immediately they made that announcement, I could immediately tell, you know, what the focus was. I mean, obviously the NDC manifesto was on Saturday. Uh, clearly the media, a uh, large portion of the conversation would not be until Monday, uh, obviously. So the front pages, et cetera, the you know, newspaper reviews, et cetera, will be highly focused on the NDC. And so if they plug themselves into it, they can share the visibility. So clearly, if they organize on Sunday, then clearly on the Monday, they're going to share with the NDC the visibility, the publicity, et cetera. So immediately I saw that announcement. I knew that was a strategy you know, to, to counter 
uh, the visibility you know of of for the NDC but as you asked the question did they achieve it i think they didn't they didn't because you know the what actually transpired was not the kind of brand image people have for the MPP, particularly for Dr. Baumi. I think that people expect a lot from him, but his delivery is a subpar. I don't think that anyone objectively can say that this is a performance expected of Dr. Baumi. Someone we know, especially leading to 2016 elections, you would expect a much higher performance. But I don't think the performance went according to their own standards. And so you realize that the, the excitement wasn't there. And as a result, the sharing of the visibility or the publicity with NDC on the Monday, and you know, even to a much more larger extent, to outshine the NDC, you know, couldn't couldn't actually happen. So I don't think that they achieved their, their, their purpose. Of course, they, they, they managed to insert themselves into the conversation, but the performance wasn't what they were expecting. And I think that the kind of conversation they expected for the Monday press is not what they got. You talk about the performance. Now, here you stress about that in, a number of times. It's about how he answered the questions that were asked of him or, or what, what he said the how and the content of the answers he gave to the questions or the questions that were asking itself. I mean, how do you assess from the perspective the performance that you stress about? Elaboration was overly done. I mean, your second question into the program was about, you know, former president jabbing you about you being economic messiah, but not speaking the economic language anymore. That was the question. And, you know, uh, the idea that, you know, uh, they, they, they thought that, you know, he could seize the moment, the opportunity to, to express himself and to perhaps give reasons why. But then he went overdrive for almost 20 minutes plus, you know, and at some point, it got so boring that even those, I am sure, his team were wondering why that long time dedicated for a particular question. I mean, it, it even got to a point where the, the one who was coordinating the program, which is Miracles, and I was surprised he did that. I mean, I would really, if I was the coordinator, of course, the, the campaign chairman, I would query him. You can't actually... Uh, sort of uh, 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 repudiate, or you can't actually tell your boss that you are speaking too much, and so you're going to time him. You can't do that. Even from a traditional perspective, all right, you have a, an elderly person, which of course he had gone overdrive, all right, as he did, and you're moderating the program. The best miracle could have done was to go and speak into his ear and say, um, uh, 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 His Excellency, please. It was too long, so maybe tone down your 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 timing. All right, but he actually repudiated him in front of the national audience and said, "You you are speaking too much. I'm going to time you." Really? <laughs> and he he said it as a joke, just like you know the vice president himself says certain things as a joke, and then he barely laughs about it which you're not supposed to do that. Of course, there are certain instances where you can punch in in a certain, uh, what do you call, light moment, you know, for people to, to, to lighten up a little bit. But you have to look at the moments of saying that. So in the first place, he took too much time elaborating on something, but he didn't even answer the question. The question is, you're no longer speaking the economic issues that you used to speak. But he took it as a slide on him, you know, for not performing economically. Of course, it's at one angle of that. But the point is that why are you no longer talking about economics? So you had already said it in the past that digitalization perhaps seems the way to go. That could actually bring in the economic conversation better. Yes, you can say that. I no longer say bare fact 
bare figures of economics, but I'm saying the same language, however, through a different means, digitalization. And that's why you don't see me talk about maybe the exchange rates, et cetera, because I think if we can solve, we can solve the same problem through digitalization, short and simple. But he went in overdrive, talk about the president, the former president doesn't know what he's talking about. His own economic performance is in shambles. Well, we know that you've said that over, over and over again, because that's exactly what you said, on which we voted out the former president. Right. Must you remind us again? No, the conversation is, why okay. aren't you speaking about the economic numbers anymore? And he went into over-elaboration. Okay, so I think mm -hmm. that, yes, he over-elaborated to some of the questions were right. a little bit surprising. I mean, <laughs> for, 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 for somebody to actually take uh, what do you call the, uh, uh, the the microphone? And it wasn't even a question to say that I'm, I don't have a question, but I have praises for you. No matter what happens, you are the best vice president ever. Really? Is that why we actually organized that event? Just to heap praises on people? I was I was a little bit surprised. And then of course, majority of the of the of the journalists have actually complained about the processes well, 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 you know, yeah. that were used to actually organize the, the fact that people yes. had to write and to that, ask for permission that, or to be, to be included and they were rejected. In, in fact, the, well, uh, as said, this side of the conversation also continues. But then again, I, I want to ask your thoughts on one quick question, and then we'll move into that. Would lead us into our next conversation here on Ghana tonight. Now, the NDC and the MPP have both presented their social contract, the manifesto, policy document to us, and the messengers. I'm talking about the flag bearer of the MPP was the sitting vice president. And then this situation of the economy we find ourselves in and what we've gone through, presenting himself and seeking to break the eight and then also break that cycle of the incumbency fatigue and so on. The, the former president's a flag bearer of the NDC, seeking a comeback, he's been there before. The message and the messenger, these two, which one of them is going to get the trust of the Ghanaian people? It's about, you know, relatability, it's about relevance, you know. Uh, clearly, uh, the political system, uh, people don't have faith in them, all right? The, the level of, you know, apathy in this country is so high. Uh, the mistrust, you know, amongst the voters and on politicians very high, you see. And so uh, when it happens like that, the only measure that perhaps you could use to bring a certain semblance of, of, of uh, uh, persuasion, you know, uh, uh, is about can the voters actually relate to what you're saying? Could they actually see a certain practicality of what you're actually promising? And that's the measure, all right? Uh, if they can relate to it, it can, if they can find a certain relevance to their lives and they could find a certain practicality that this is doable, this is possible, or oh, this one, if they really you know, mean business, they can achieve it. And it is also relevant to our economic circumstances, et cetera, all right? That could be used as a, a tool to persuade the voters, all right? right. Uh, but on the bare foot, on the bare face of, uh, you know, uh, believability trust, completely is gone. I mean, when you listen to voters, majority of the voters don't believe. And when I say voters, I don't right. mean the activists, the support bases or the the uh, what do you call the clear uh, uh, what do you call sympathizers of the political of, of, parties 